I'm very pleased to uh, invite our next speaker to the stage, Mark Broxton, who's um, had 30 years experience in health and health service delivery and management and is now at uh, Primary Health uh, Network Tasmania. He's going to speak to us about commissioning community-based mental health care. Thanks, Mark. And Primary Health Tasmania is, a, um, is an organisation, one of 31 primary health networks across Australia um, that has been uh, charged with the role of, um, of delivering the Australian government funded uh, primary based mental health care and in our case into Tasmania. What we're really looking at is, is I guess how we um, ensure that people receive the right care in the right place, delivered by the right person and at the right time and providing safe high quality mental health care that supports them to be active participants at home and in their communities and keeps them out of hospital unless that's where they really need to be. As I said, Primary Health Tasmania is one of 31 primary health networks across Australia. We are a statewide organisation, so there is a lot of positive opportunity in that, having one organisation servicing the whole state. We've been charged with implementing a commissioning approach to, the, to support the reform of federally funded primary health care services. And I know at the moment you're left in a place where uh, organisations and consumers of services and carers are finding themselves in a flurry of reform, uh, the NDIS, uh, uh, primary health networks, and in Tasmania, the uh, state government's uh, Rethink Mental Health Plan. And we are aware that we need to work closely together as a group to try and make sure that that uh, flurry is kept as streamlined as possible. The networks are charged with implementing a commissioning approach to support the reform of federally funded primary health care services and the Australian Government released its response to the National Mental Health Commission review last November. And in that, PHNs were given the role of commissioning Australian Government funded mental health services. What is commissioning? Um, and commissioning is a, uh, is a term given to the process of identifying what healthcare services local people need and then procuring or implementing these services in partnership with providers, consumers and carers. It's been implemented in a range of other jurisdictions and the NHS in the UK is probably one of the most cited examples. I will make the important point that the NHS has been working for 15 years and still doesn't seem to have it right, particularly not in the mental health space. So whilst I say they're the most excited example, we hope to learn from their mistakes, not actually what they're doing. It's a process of identifying what healthcare services are required and then working with others to put these services on the ground. And unlike procuring services by contract, it is expected to be a more collaborative approach that wherever possible involves all interested parties in the process. Commissioning focuses those involved in the achievement of broader health outcomes, not just the delivery of, self, uh, of service outputs. So for example, an outcome might be, to, uh, might be to increase the consumer satisfaction with the mental health services they receive. An output is just the number of consumers receiving services. So what we did in the early months of our new existence as a primary health network, we spent some time developing a four-step approach to commissioning. And we came up with this wonderful picture, which unfortunately you won't be able to re read the smaller print, uh, and it contains such important gravitas information. Uh, but the approach has since received a lot of traction with other PHNs, and we believe it will be a great enabler in adopting and implementing commission services with our stakeholders. And it's, the important thing is it's characterised by four steps a concept, a design, the solutions, and the outcomes. So what is concept? The concept phase is all about getting a clear picture of the Tasmanian situation and understanding the gaps and issues that stand between our current state and where we, the Tasmanian community, would like to be in terms of a desired state. And we're looking at that as the question, what good looks like? What does good look like from the perspective of the consumer, the person who is in the process of requiring those services? What does good look like from the, the um, perspective of the carer? And what does good look like from the perspective of the provider and then the funder? And to do this, Primary Health Tasmania needs to engage with others, 
to ensure that all those perspectives are captured. The next stage is design. And the design phase works with consumers, providers and service facilitators to take the what good looks like and actively co-design new or improved approaches to service delivery. This will take into consideration the Tasmanian and, where appropriate, regional and local contexts. And the co-design of healthcare interventions may also require the decommissioning of existing services where they are not meeting the needs of the community. But we don't want that to be seen as a fearful thing because we believe if everyone's been involved appropriately in the design of that process, what they'll recognise is that decommissioning is in fact changing things from one point to another to deliver better services. The solutions phase is where the co-designed interventions are mobilised. This takes into consideration any drivers or limitations that might impact the ability to put the interventions on the ground. Drivers and limitations may be related to such things as the amount of money available, workforce availability or skills and experience, accessibility of services to those that need them. And it's very important that all involved understand and agree to the goals and measures that are set to monitor how well the service works. The fourth step is around outcomes. And the outcomes phase is all about making sure that we can measure whether we have done the things we said we would do and that the health and well-being of those receiving the services has in fact improved. And we use the SMART uh, process for doing that. Goals that are specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, they're relevant, and they can be done within a certain time uh, perspective, a time bound. So what have we been doing? We've been around now for nearly seven or eight months. Feels a little longer um, in one way, and in other ways it feels like it was only yesterday. But Primary Health Tasmania has already embarked on the commissioning journey, and by participating in forums such as the PIR conference today, or meeting with stakeholders one-on-one, -on -one, we're able to share information and garner feedback. And I will be doing a little workshop around getting started with commissioning later this morning, and I invite you to come along if you have some interest in what that process looks like. The community provider and system readiness is a really vital catalyst for success, and we can't, Primary Health Tasmania cannot do this alone. Primary Health Tasmania is also bringing together a primary mental health advisory group which will include representation from consumers, carers, GPs, mental health professionals, local, state and uh, federal government, and peak bodies, so that we're kept honest and engaged in the process. We've also set about delivering what we're calling mental health commissioning intentions. And these are Primary Health Tasmania's intentions around how we expect to move forwards over the next, in the first instance, 12 months. And we've produced a, uh, a copy of a document. It's available on our website for those that might be uh, interested. And it's also, um, I do have a few hard, copy, um, uh, hard copies available if people want to see me after the talk. This has been a consultation draft. Um, and we have now received quite significant levels of feedback from a range of organisations and individuals. And we're now moving through that to ensure that we can um, uh, feed back a final document. So what did we find when we went into that process? And what we did was we actually went about trying to um, decipher, analyse and understand all the data that's available currently about primary mental health care in Tasmania. That is health care that is carried out in the community. There was lots of data, lots and lots and lots and lots of data. And what we did find was that in fact there hadn't been a lot of effort placed into actually putting all that data in one place and actually starting to consider how it all ties together and what it means. When we started doing that, we were looking for the lessons learned. We thought by analysing all the data, we'd get an answer. We'd know what we were going to do, what our intentions would be, and we'd be able to come to the community with some feedback around how we would engage with them to check in and see whether that was going to work. In fact, what we found out is there were more questions than answers. 
So really in our first year we've had to commit to some very high level intentions. These intentions respond to the Australian and Tasmanian government expectations and reflect a considered and careful approach to achieve improved primary mental health outcomes for the Tasmanian community. I'd like to share those with you. We will um, look to co-design at least two commission services for pilot in the coming year. Unfortunately, as many of you know, when you're working with government partners, politicians and government departments need their deliverables. The politicians need their hard hat moments and their silver shovel moments. And we, we are required, as per all government funded organisation, to support that process. And we believe there we will quickly be able to find at least two areas in Tasmania that are currently in need of a different way of doing business. We know, in fact, there'll be many more. In the meantime, we will introduce and deliver a commissioning-like approach in subcontracting all other primary mental health services for which Australian Government funding is provided to Primary Health Tasmania. And we've started that process, and for those of you that are in those parts of your organisations that look at tenders, you will have seen that we put out our first tender for mental health services for mild uh, to moderate acuity uh, Tasmanians yesterday. And we'll work with the key partners and stakeholders to develop a joint mental health commissioning strategy for primary mental health services in Tasmania. We see this as a really important step. Tasmania needs one mental health strategy. It has to tie primary mental health care across into acute mental health care and more importantly, back out again. And I really appreciated Judy sharing her story about the step up, step down issues around is the, the hospital services in, in, um, in uh, Canberra, and they are not peculiar to Canberra. Those sorts of issues are everywhere. We understand them and we know about them, but we need to work out how we can um, resolve them. And, and I believe strongly, as I, as, I, as I do think that other stakeholders do too, that a single system approach is the only way to go. We will develop supporting guidelines and frameworks for a step model of primary mental health care in preparation for trial in 27 and 18. One of the expectations of the Commonwealth through its mental health reform, in fact its chronic conditions reform more broadly, is that we look at what they're calling a step model of care. That is to ensure that people receive the right sort of care depending on where they are in the trajectory of their illness. So at a prevention level, what sort of care is required, at a, at a mild and early intervention level, what sort of care is required? At that moderate level, at a higher acuity level where people may be traversing in and out of, of the acute sector, what sort of care is required? And making sure that the services that are available in the community are integrated to ensure that that pathway both up and down is clear and understood and all users of the pathway, uh, pathways can in fact access them. We will initiate some co-design processes to establish Commission primary mental health service solutions in the areas of suicide prevention, low intensity services for people with mild mental illness, child and youth mental health, community based step up, step down models of care for people with severe and complex mental, mental illness, and integrated mental health service options for better support for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander populations. These are the areas of uh, primary mental health care that the Commonwealth and the, Na the National Mental Health Commission identified as being critical for consideration by primary health networks into the next three years. On that note, look, I'm happy to take questions. I'm hoping I've helped uh, Peter and the organisation get back on track this morning. Um, as I said, it's a little dry. I didn't want to bore you too much, so I've kept it as quick as possible. So please, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. Marvellous. Everybody's ready for morning tea. Sorry, I've got a question over here. Hello. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah where GPs fit into the, the whole strategy? Because to me, that's really the yeah. main and, and look, primary. And, and, and quite obviously, um, another uh, driving um, uh, process that the, that the Commonwealth reform and the state-based mental health reform through Rethink has been uh, considering is, is the 
process of a healthcare home, and certainly general practice is seen as, as having that key um, role, and, um, and we're, we're also working with GPs very closely of how that fits, and we recognise as well that the, uh, that the uh, you know, general practice has found itself sometimes on the outer with regards to mental health care. Um, we're aware that there is some um, workforce capacity issues around that too. So general practice is right in the middle of the mix. Sorry, um, just more specifically, I suppose, um, there's an, a lot of ignorance and stigma still in the, in the GPs and do yeah. they have the training? Yeah, no, look, they... I understand fully. And, that, and they're the workforce issues that I'm talking about. We need to make sure that, that the workforce has the correct training and information to enable them to work better in that space. And look, and I, and I think that a number of the GPs that I have spoken to would agree with your consideration. I can't see any of you, so please just yell out if you need a question. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>